All right, people, I'm doing this intro next to a noisy highway here. And to be honest with you, the reason I didn't do an intro over at the ramp, it was, it was just as noisy there. So uh, I've been on fish, Fort Loudon Reservoir, prices of fuel. Uh, there's no sense in me driving 60 miles farther if I'm catching fish here. I'm here, I done missed the morning bite. Uh, had a lot to do, and I just did not get out here till almost noon, so. Guys have been wanting me to use live bait. They say if you use live baits, I'll catch more flatheads. Well, that's really not true, not in my waters. All my flatheads have come on, or as far as the big flatheads have come on cut bait. I've caught a lot of flatheads on live bait, but nothing over probably 25 pounds. So, uh, I have been incorporating live bluegills in my videos just to show these people what happens video per video when I'm using them. And then they can see where I'm coming from. Now, it's not impossible to get a big fish on a live bluegill, of course. But it just doesn't perform like the cut bait. Either way, I'm going to be throwing mostly cut bait. I will have one live bluegill dropped over the side of the boat at all times. Either way, we're out here on Fort Lousy today trying to see what we can get in the boat. Got plenty of live bluegills in the tank. Got plenty of fresh skipjack. For all you people that keep mentioning that my butt's wet, it's going to stay wet because it rains every stinking day. And that seat holds water. And so that's just the way it is. There's a really large rock down in the water and I'm on an outside ledge where a hole forms and that really large rock is sitting right in that hole. So that looks like good flathead type neighborhood. Of course we're going to catch blues, that's what dominates the Tennessee River. But since I am dropping live bluegills, I want to fish a flathead prone area. Oh yeah. Lots of bluegills. Not fishing real deep like I have been. We're in 46 foot. Out here in the heat of the day. Gonna see if we can conjure one up. Ouch. Dang hook got me. Yes, sir. I'm going to sit on this spot a while. If it's not productive, we'll get to covering water. There's fish here.
Y'all, I have two fish on at the same exact time. I've got a two hook rig and there's a little dink blue cat attached to the stinger hook and a larger blue cat that got the circle hook. But I, I reeled in two fish uh, with the same rig. <laughs> Pretty crazy right there. Little old tiny blue cat. Much larger blue cat. That's what happens to live bluegills in the Tennessee River. Some old small fish, a gar, some old dink blue cat happens time and time and time again. That's what you usually get on a live bluegill around here. Sometimes it's a channel cat. Woo, that's a monster. Another one going down.
Hello, Guillaume. I believe we got a bite on the skipjack. Not a bad fish. Old big headed male off the nest. Yeah. Yeah, I got that wide head, man. Another one on the skipjack. <laughs> they seem to like that skipjack on the Tennessee River. Could be the reason that they're seven dollars a piece at Big Fish Outfitters. Another one eats the skipjack.
We might have just got a flathead on a bluegill. He's rambunctious. I figured there'd be a flathead laying here. Just a matter of getting them to eat. They only eat when they want to. We got it on a live bluegill. But here again, it's not a large flathead. Nice fish to a lot of people. But again, all my giants have came on cut skipjack. Sitting out here in the hot summer sun waiting on one of these things to eat. That was a rambunctious little fish. For those of y'all that see me set that hook, that's because I'm not using a circle hook on these live bluegills. I'm using an 8-aught, 3X, owner Aki Twist J-hook. I miss a lot of flatheads on a suspended bite because they don't tend to run away from the boat. They tend to stay straight down and that hook a lot of times wants to stay in the uh, upper tooth patch area. So that's why you see me set the hook on that fish. It's hotter than a hoochie coochie out here. All right, y'all, there's your bait comparison again. Uh, the bluegill did get a flathead. Again, it was not a large flathead. Skipjack, once again, outperformed it in numbers of fish and it again got the biggest fish. Now I lived up in West Virginia. I fished the Guyandot rivers, the Tug rivers, and the only thing I would catch a flathead on in those rivers was a live bait. I used cut baits all the time, all I got was channel cat. Those rivers are different. Those rivers don't have shad and herring running around. Uh, now I would go in the same state over to the Kanawha River or up in the Ohio River and I would again start catching flatheads on cut bait. Those are much larger rivers. They have lots of shad, uh, river herring, moon eye, different stuff. And uh, there's way more to eat in these large river systems. In these large river systems like mine, cut bait is usually the best choice for numbers of fish and large fish. I will continue to use the bluegills. Why not, I got a live well. I've got access to them. I'll use them throughout the summer for a bit. We'll see what happens. But either way, we just sat in one spot today, let the fish come to us and choose the bait they want. This is a video. There was fish in the video. That makes it a fishing video. This is Catfish Dave with another one, signing out.